preach and prophesy in your name so that when your people, nourished, comfort, and instructed by your word, may do whatever you command, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and our one God, forever and ever. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. 
There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For what is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquestionable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Cheryl, 
can you read, uh, starting with verse 4 and continuing on to verse 11? There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings of the same God who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discern discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. My dear brothers and sisters, we see Paul writing to his church that he established in the city of Corinth that the Spirit <laughs> is given to each person as God sees. Fit. Because the workings, as we will see, does not rest upon one gift. But when we speak of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we speak of the different manifestations, but of the same Spirit. John, if you could continue on verse 11 and all the way leading up to verse 15. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing, distributing them equally to each person as he wishes. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all, we were all given to drink of one Spirit. Now, the body is not a single part, but many. Thank you. Fernanda, if you're up to it, could you continue on verse 15, leading up to verse 19? So that there may be no difference. 
division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concerns for one another. If, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part, part is honored, all the parts share its joy. We are all on different levels, my dear brothers and sisters, and we are all, according to the Holy Spirit, given gifts, again, for the edification of the church. As we will see, that in the application of Christ, that there are different parts that form the whole body of Christ. And so, if we can, um, who would like to read? Vincent? Sure. Do you have your glasses? Please continue. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be the first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then IEDs, then gifts of healing, gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Thank you. So as we see, we all have our hearts as the body of Christ. There are some that would say to me, geez, Father, I don't know how you can just stand up and on, on the spur of a moment be able to offer prayer. Well, there are different gifts that are given to each and every single one of you for the sum total, again, of the sanctification of the individual and the edification of the entire church. Barbara, are you up to read? Okay. Um, would somebody like to finish? With the last of it. Yes, Andre, Croce. Our own apostles, our own prophets, our own teachers, do all work mighty deeds, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret them, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gift. Strive eagerly, eagerly for the greatest of the spiritual gifts. There is no one gift. That is more important than the other is what Paul is trying to say, that we are all a part of the body of Christ. And so we should strive to understand the gifts that we have. If there is any one gift that is greater than all the gifts that God gives unto us, it is our attachment and our profession of faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul wrote to the Corinthians because they were a, they were not a God-fearing city. It was a very immoral city. And so what Paul wanted to do was to try to bring to the knowledge and to the wisdom of the people of Corinth that God works in each and every single one of us. And so as he worked within the people of the church of Corinth, and so, my dear brothers and sisters, from time to time, um, in keeping with the theme of the Spirit, the outlaying of the Spirit, we will see that as we continue, of God in His infinite mercy in strengthening the church through each and every single one of us. Amen. amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. And I thank you because next week, I'll probably call on one of you to deliver the sermon. <laughs>
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy God and the apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather here to give God praise and thanksgiving, we pray with the following intentions, the responses, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for world peace, for there are many places in our world today where there is the killing of the innocents, and so we offer this intention that through our prayers, dear Lord, that the world may find peace. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Polish National Catholic Church and for the Eastern Diocese. This coming Saturday, there will be the Diocesan Synod of the Eastern Diocese, and we pray that the Holy Spirit might move all the delegates that are chosen to represent the parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the growth of our parish, that the Spirit of God may move among us, and that we, as ambassadors and emissaries of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may bring others into the fold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray this day, most humbly, for all abused and neglected children, for all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the disasters that have taken place with the recent storm Helene in not only Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, those that have lost everything, as well as those who have lost their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray this day for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would protect them through his holy angels, and return them safely unto their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, do not quench the spirit within us, and may we not despise prophetic utterances. We pray that we may test everything according to your will, and retain what is good, as well as refrain from every kind of evil. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Sanctify our offering, Lord our God, and so transform it by your Spirit, that it may become an eternal gift worthy of you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. 
Peace be unto you. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul and my life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are you if you truly hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. You see the bottom?
as they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The Lord be with you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 